Good morning everyone. Today is Sunday. 1st of August 1 a 2021 time as I started 10 10 so sometimes we need to deal with heartbreak sometimes we need to deal with betrayal even our best enemy can betray us if happened to Jesus what happened to us even Jesus said what they done to the wet stick what can they do to the dry stick some people think they abide in Jesus Christ but some people say you have to abide in Jesus Christ so and some people have distance from Jesus Christ like my sisters my sister they don't know God but I know your God I know your God and I know time management of your God I know your system I know everything about you I don't need to know any I know all, all I have all information about you I know your intention I know your manipulation I know everything I just know sometimes I worked with you like my ex publisher I worked with them I know they are fake because I work with them sometimes I know some people from distance from their messages they have TV and I listen and watch their TV and I know what kind of person they are so today I decided to talk about betrayal betrayal is a very important topic we deal with betrayal in every day in daily basis we deal with betrayal sometimes it's a small betrayal when you go to the shop and they give you the wrong price that's a betrayal because they have a lot of problem but a lady psychologist she called herself she called herself doctor but I don't care I don't care about the title but she was saying that when you get married betrayal is in the package you have to expect betrayal when you get married so you see the most fundamental things that built on trust and a strong foundation that is family and marriage right we see that every community built around the families but when psychologists say that you you can expect betrayal even in the family so what do you expect you have to deal with betrayal in daily basis but I want to talk about betrayal when you are a Christian if you are a Christian if if you are a Christian and knows about Jesus Christ then you know about Judas Iscariot as well the first thing that comes to your mind is Judas Iscariot when you talk about betrayal who was Judas Iscariot he was one of the twelve he was one of the twelve and betrayed Jesus how ironic is that somebody that Jesus Christ chose himself you see some pastors said I'm ordained I'm chosen by God even Judas Iscariot was chosen by God so don't be proud don't be full of yourself even Judas Iscariot was selected by God himself not chosen by another pastor he was handpicked he was specifically selected by Jesus himself Jesus came down to earth and choose 12 one of the 12 was 
Judas Iscariot. So, if you are selected by God, so what? You can betray Jesus on a daily basis. Sometimes I asked, I asked a false teacher in the church that what happened if you betray Jesus every minute of your life? With every breath you betray Jesus, what happened then? Grace of God still works or not? If you betray Jesus with every thought that you have, every thought that you have, every minute, betray God. What happened then? Answer it for me. What happened then? You, we know all about grace, but grace doesn't work all the time. Because it was after Jesus. Even, even after, some people said, no, oh, grace work after Jesus Christ went on cross. So, we say grace start there. What happened to a couple who sold their property and bring the money to show their generosity? They wanted to show their generosity to the disciples and they sold their property and they bring money. They wanted to show their generosity. So what happened? They died instantly. They died instantly. So grace doesn't work all the time. That's why I believe that you can lose your salvation. But today I'm not talking about losing salvation. I'm talking about betrayal. Matthew 17:22. So if you start dating at age of 17, pay attention to 17:22. Matthew 17:22. After they gathered again in Galilee, Jesus told them the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemy. Maybe some of you from the church, after lockdown, you gather again. You have opportunity to gather outside. So you gather again. Listen to Matthew 17:22. After they gathered again. So if you have a sisterhood and come back, sisterhood, listen again. They gathered again in Galilee. Jesus told them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemy. When you want to send someone to the enemy's place, enemy is stationed in Toronto. When you want to send someone to the station of enemy, you are betraying Jesus Christ. When you gather again, you are betraying Jesus Christ. That's what Judas Iscariot did. Listen, listen. He said, we are going up, we are going up to Jerusalem, where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priest and teacher of religious law. When you are teaching laws from the TV, if you are teaching law from the TV, if you are teacher or leader, maybe you are lead pastor, maybe you are another priest or pastor, I don't care. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the lead pastors, lead priests, and teachers of religious law. That's also betrayal, according to the Word of God. They will sentence him to die. They 
Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip and crucified. When you hand somebody over to his enemies, when you hand somebody to the mocking person, you mock somebody, you laugh at somebody, and you deliver somebody to the enemies. Matthew 2018, again. The, even the number said itself, I don't need to read the verses. The number asks you a question. The number says a lot. The numbers says a lot. You don't need to preach from numbers. You don't need to read the verses. The number says everything. Matthew 17, 22 and Matthew 20, 18. 20, 18. Lesson. He said, we are going up to Jerusalem. If you want to go up to Jerusalem, be careful. Because son of man will be betrayed to the living priest. And as you know, as you know, you know, you said, I know everything as you know. As you know, Passover begins in two days. And the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Matthew 26, number 2. As you noticed, I didn't mention favorite part because I want to make a point. I want to make a point because sometimes you need to pay attention. Don't wait until, you no, know, in football. Sometimes you do something at the last moment we say we have a saying in Farsi something gets solved a problem gets solved at the last minute 90 minutes because football has 90 minutes 90 minutes sometimes you football has to go over because they are equal and the match continue but don't postpone everything to last minute. You have to act now. You have to think about what you did now. So, remember, you don't always have time. Everybody knows about the story of five and five. There was two five. And five of them stayed behind the door and they knock. It's too late. The door is already locked. Nobody gonna open the door when the door is locked. Your timing is done, finished. So be careful. When you want to do something, think about consequences. Every action has counteraction. It's a ripple effect. So, I caught the last part. I caught the favorite moment because I want to make a point. I want to say about you don't have much time. Don't wait until the last minute to repent. Some people in the deathbed they realize that they wasted all their life. Don't be like that person. So be careful because that I caught the favorite moment. You don't need to wait until the last. You don't need to spend years and years and then find out, oh, I made mistakes or you find out that at the last minute that 
Oh, I was in the wrong direction. What should I do now? Realize it right now. That are you doing the right thing or not? Think about what you have done. You don't need to wait until the end. Verse 20, so I read 2018, but another verse 20 says that when it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve while they were eating. He said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. It was evening okay it's it's normally every day has an evening so it was one evening and jesus sat down on the table with the 12 while they were eating so if you are sitting at the table if you are gathered around the table and eat if you eat non-stop if you want to eat a lot and sit at the table then be careful not only what you eat you have to be careful what you eat but worry about the food when you sit at the table and eat worry about the food and worry about what you are going to do because they were eating and the food there is no problem with the food sometimes you have to worry about food right now today Today is Sunday, and every pastor, I guess, they send a message. They talk about something. Worry about that food. But not only worry about that food, but also worry about what you are going to do. And the tale of that, Jesus Christ said, one of you will betray me, sitting on the table. And if you eating be careful of that what are you going to do because because even jesus christ said go harry if you think if you think god tell you to do something if you think god tell you to be someone else it's not from god no 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 live your own life don't live somebody else's life even if you think God tell you to do that, don't do it. Live your own life. You think God tell you to register or go and do something or do some wicked things. Think twice. If you want to think something, if you want to do something, if you want to say something, think twice. Is it from God? Or really my imagination? my hallucination it's not from god if you are doing a wicked one if you are living somebody else's life if you are putting in somebody else's shoes it's a wicked thing it's not from god okay so clearly a scripture says that because as the scripture declared, a scripture declared that long ago, it's from long ago, it's not from today. A scripture declared long ago that how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. That's why I caught the end part. You don't have to wait until the end. I caught the favorite moment. Because it is serious. I am dead serious. It's so serious. How terrible it will be for the one who betrays me. And uh, it would be for better for that man if he had never been born. If you are a man, if you are a man and you think you are humble, be careful. Be careful because, because 
scripture word of God declared long ago that if you betray somebody then it be better not born again another part of the word of God we read that somebody who cause somebody who caused stumble somebody and there is a lot of people come and go why they people come and go because they come to church and they hear and see the action of the Christian of the pastors they look up to pastors and said what what this is Christianity they go they come and see and they go said word of God said you better put yourself into the ocean you better put yourself on the ocean and with the stone on your neck then cause a stumble one little one if you cause a stumble for the little one then you better go put yourself onto the ocean so be careful what you say be careful what you act because if you are a leader of the church people look up to you then if you cause them a stumble your destiny not good not at all don't think that the grace of God covers you even the even even after years manipulating after years of telling lies God didn't do anything about it so don't think that oh I'm right because it never happened I'm years in ministry even if you are 25 years in ministry don't think that oh another 25 happened no it's not going to happen like this it's not going to happen even if you are 25 in ministry and you are telling lies during those 25 God will act and I don't know when but the rest of God will come upon you I promise I promise don't think that when you're telling lies nothing happened because every action has counteraction has consequences if I don't know if if imagine doesn't happen in your lifetime then when you go face to face to God then God said I never known you never I never known you get away from my sight and also in verse 45 if you want 45 pay attention to this in verse 45 we read that then he came to disciples and said go ahead and sleep be relaxed be relaxed and go to sleep after 45 because have your rest but look look if you want to look look after 45 you look have your rest but look the time has come the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners up let's be going look my betrayer is here my betrayer is here up the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners you know when they want to crucify someone how they do crucify someone they put it up they lie down on the cross of somebody and they bring up why why they put the cross up because because 
they have to do this because somebody has to feel the pressure on the cross when you are up you feel pressure that's why that's why betrayer always say up up that's the exact word of the betray person someone who betray said up up but no it's not up if you are looking for god god is not up there believe me believe in me god is not up there if you are a christian God is in your heart. God is not up there. God is in your heart. God is in my heart. So, what's going to happen? Are you going to betray Jesus? Some people put Jesus on the cross in daily basis. Believe me. And they say, oh, I'm under protection of God. Even non-Christians said that. I told you before, there was a lady in insurance company and she was saying that there is someone up there protecting me. She was not Christian. And she said that. So whatever you say, be careful. Maybe it's wrong. Sometimes the truth that you believe in is a lie check reality check have a reality check check it with the true gospel so that's all i wanted to say today let me pray for you before i close god forgive us because sometimes we want to do right things but we don't know what is right things because sometimes we are brainwashed sometimes we are brainwashed and we think what we are doing is the right things but it's actually wrong so father god give us understanding to do the right things and if somebody knows the truth and do opposite of the right things clearly from the church God please clear the church and give understanding and get rid of hypocrisy in the church God please clear the church from hypocrisy in the name of jesus i pray amen amen and amen next